All right, let's go ahead and go through these guided practice problems. This concept of the mole is going to be very crucial for the entire year, and we're going to be using this every single unit for the whole year. Um, so it's going to be very important that you get this one concept down. I know that it's going to be a little different, but you will get used to it. But just to encourage you, it is similar to converting uh, between the other units that we converted between last uh, unit and unit one. And so let's go ahead and take a look. If we are given grams, we can take the grams and convert them to moles, and then we can take the moles and convert them to atoms. And so that's our flowchart here. And so we can go forward and backwards in the flowchart. We can, um, you can, we can start anywhere and go anywhere. And so for example, if we're given moles, we can go from moles to grams, and we can go from moles to atoms. However, if we're given atoms and we're asked to go to grams, we have to first go to moles and then we go to grams. And so if we go from one end to the other, it's gonna end up being a two-step problem or a two-fraction problem. So let's go ahead and get started here. So let's go ahead and take a look at this first practice problem. You'll see that we are given 2.00 moles of silicon, and the question is asking for atoms. So it's asking us to take the moles and convert it to atoms. And if you take a look at our flowchart here, again, we're given moles, it's asking for atoms, and notice how we can convert directly between the two. Now what I'm going to go ahead and say is the first three steps to these problems are always going to be the same. It's always going to, it will always be the same. The, the first thing you want to do is you want to write what's given to you. So we're given 2.00 moles, and I'm going to encourage you to put the symbol after that. It's not going to matter right now, but it will matter in a future unit. So we have moles of silicon. Then what we're going to do is we need to convert it from moles to silicon, and the way we're going to do that is by using a conversion factor. Now, if you uh, take a look, we know that, uh, I'm going to write the conversion factor up here, we know that one mole of anything is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of that thing. And so it doesn't matter what type of atoms we're dealing with. We know that one mole of anything is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. And so again, we want to set up our fraction to where the units are canceling out. And so what I want to ask you is where should we put these moles to cancel out the moles? Well, we should put them on the bottom. And so we're going to end up putting the moles on the bottom. And it's moles of silicon. And we're going to go from moles of silicon to atoms of silicon. And if you take a look at the conversion factor, or the conversion, we know that uh, what goes in front of moles, a one, we know that one mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And all we need to do is type this into our calculator, and what we will end up with, with correct sig figs, is 1.20 times 10 to the 24th atoms of silicon. So what I want you all to do is pause the video, type this into the calculator to make sure that you get the correct, uh, the correct number. Because typing it into the calculator is going to be uh, one of the more uh, uh, areas prone to making mistakes. So um, the other thing too that I want to point out is that we started with three sig figs and we'll end with three sig figs. So that's why we add that zero at the end there. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at this next one here. So we have 27.7 grams of silicon. So now it's giving us grams of silicon, and it's asking for moles of silicon. So in this situation, I'm going to go ahead and uh, erase this here. In this situation, we are given grams, and it's asking for moles. And something we need to keep in mind is we know that one mole, notice how one goes in front of moles there, is equal to, and I'm going to put the molar mass, is equal to the molar mass in grams. Now the molar mass, where do we get this molar mass? We get it from the periodic table. And so that's something that we need to keep in mind. And so since we're dealing with silicon, I'm going to go to the periodic table real quick. And let's take a look at silicon. Here's silicon right here. And this right here is the molar mass. That is the molar mass of silicon. This here would be the molar mass of aluminum, this would be the molar mass of carbon, and so on. 
And essentially what those are, those are the, the grams of that element that are in one mole. So if we have one mole of silicon, we have 28.086. So I'm gonna go ahead and erase this up here. Or actually, instead of erasing it, I'm just gonna rewrite it. So we know that one mole of silicon is equal to 28.086 grams of silicon. And so this is uh, our, we're gonna use this to make our conversion factor. All right, so let's go ahead and do this here. So we have 27.7 grams of silicon, and we're gonna go ahead and uh, multiply it by uh, conversion factor. And we want to think to ourselves, how do we cancel out the grams of silicon? Well, we put the grams of silicon on the bottom because when we do that, they cancel out and we can go from grams to moles of silicon. Now notice we can do that because according to this flow chart here, we can go from grams to moles. They're right next to each other. And now we can use this, uh, this information up here. We know that one mole is equal to 28 point zero eight six grams of silicon so all we need to do is type that in our calculator and get the right answer and when we type that in the calculator the calculator ends up giving us point nine eight six two five six um, except there's two things wrong with this all right so there's two things wrong the first thing is the number sig figs notice how we start with three sig figs so that means we need to end with three sig figs. So what we do is we round off this last part here. The other thing that's wrong is we're missing the units. And notice how the grams have canceled and we're left with moles of silicon. And so our units are gonna be moles of silicon, which is what the problem was asking for. And let's not forget to box our answer and put a smiley face just because we're happy. All right, so if you uh, take a look at the first two problems, notice how they're both one conversion. There's one, they're one fraction problems. And that's because we can go directly between grams and moles and we can go directly between atoms and moles. But notice this next one here. Notice this next one. And I'm gonna go ahead and erase the top here. The next one, if you uh, take a look at it, this one is asking for atoms and it's giving us grams. So it's giving us grams and it's asking for atoms. And in this situation, you cannot go directly between grams and atoms. We have to take the grams and go to moles, and then we have to take the moles and go to atoms. And so we need to uh, make sure that we convert to the moles first. Now we can do this in one setup to where we're gonna end up having two conversion factors. So first off, we're going to write what's given to us. So we're given 78.2 grams, and it's grams of O2. And we're gonna then multiply it by some conversion factor. And to cancel out the grams, you need to put the grams on the bottom, because when you do that, they cancel. Now, um, I'm gonna go ahead and color code this, because I think it'll help see. Now we're gonna go from grams to moles because we can go from grams to moles. Now, when we go from grams to moles, we're not done yet. If we were to have stopped here, we would end at moles, but we need to actually go one more step because the problem wants us to go all the way to atoms, and so we need to multiply it by another conversion factor. And then where do we put the moles to cancel out the moles? We put the moles on the bottom. And so when you put the moles on the bottom, they end up canceling. And we can now go from moles to atoms. And uh, just a disclaimer, it's technically molecules, but we'll talk about that later. But anyways, um, we can go from moles to atoms. So if you take a look at our setup here, we ended up having to do two conversions. We first went from grams to moles because we cannot go from grams to atoms, but we can go from grams to moles. We then went from moles to atoms. And so what we're then going to do is fill in the numbers now. Now notice what the conversion factor is between moles and atoms. We know that one mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms, all right? And then the conversion factor for moles, uh, between moles and grams is one mole is the molar mass in grams. Well, again, we get the molar mass from the periodic table. So let's go and take a look at the periodic table here. 
and let's take a look at oxygen. Here's oxygen. Oxygen has a molar mass of 15.999, and so let's go ahead and go back here. So again, oxygen has a molar mass of 15.999, except we don't have one oxygen, we have two, because oxygen is a Hofbrinkle. And again, Hofbrinkles are elements that, when they are alone by themselves, will not just have one but two. And so because there's two oxygens, we need to multiply the molar mass by two. And so we need to take the 15.999, which is on the periodic table here, and multiply it by two. And when we do that, we end up getting that one mole is equal to 31.998 grams of oxygen gas. Now all we need to do is type this in the calculator. You take this uh, number here and you multiply it by the top numbers and then you divide it by the bottom numbers. And go ahead and type that in your calculator to see if you get the right answer. And what we will end up with is 1.47 times 10 to the 23rd, oh, I'm sorry, 24th atoms of oxygen gas. And that is our answer. So again, make sure you're able to type that in the calculator. We all have different calculators, and I will be uh, talking about how to do this in class. So let's go ahead and move on to the next problems here. Um, so these are part of the independent practice problems, but I did want to show you how to set up more of these, all right? And so what I'm gonna encourage you to do is pause this video to set up uh, number four. So I want you to set up number four um, and uh, you know, make sure that you can actually do it. So go ahead and do that, pause the video, set up number four, and then when you are done, watch this. And I'm gonna go through these a little bit faster. All right, so we're asked to calculate the grams and we're given atoms. So again, we're given atoms, we're asked to calculate the grams. Now the atoms, we cannot go directly between atoms and grams. We have to go from atoms to moles and then moles to grams. And so we need to go from, again, atoms to moles and moles to grams. And so let's go ahead and do this. So we have 1.20 times 10 to the 24th atoms of zinc. And we need to multiply by a conversion factor. And notice how this first part is always gonna be the same. It's actually really straightforward. And the more you practice it, the more it'll, it'll get easy. So notice how I set this up. I, you always will end up putting this unit on the bottom here. Because what happens is they cancel out. Now we're given atoms, and notice how we can go from atoms to moles. The other thing I wanna do is point out how you can go backwards in the flowchart. There's not a forward or backwards. It's, you can go either direction. And then we're gonna go from atoms to moles first. There's moles of zinc. And then what we need to do is we need to go one more step to where we go from moles of zinc to grams of zinc. Because again, the moles, we don't want the moles. We put them on the bottom to cancel them out. And then we go from moles to grams. Now I'm gonna go ahead and give you a hint here. What is always gonna go in front of moles? A one will always go in front of moles because we know that one mole is equal to the molar mass in grams and we know that one mole is equal to Avogadro's number which is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And so we know that one mole is uh, equal to whatever. And so a one will always go in front of moles. In fact, a one will always go in front of moles for the most of the year until the middle of next semester. So just keep that in mind, a one will always go in front of moles. So when we go from moles to atoms, so notice how, uh, what do we use when we go between moles and atoms, what do we use? We use Avogadro's number. So uh, we use Avogadro's number, which is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. What do we use when we go between grams and moles? What do we use? Well, we use the molar mass. And so the molar mass we find on the periodic table. And so let's go ahead and take a look at the periodic table. Here's zinc. It's gonna be 65.38. And so we're gonna put 65.38. And we just type that in our calculator to get the right answer. 
And if you did this correctly, you would end up with 130 grams of zinc. Except, there's something wrong with that answer. The answer does not have the correct number of sig figs. If you take a look, the, the, what we start with is three sig figs, so we need to end with three sig figs, and the way we do that is by putting a decimal there. And when we put a decimal there, it makes that zero significant, and that is our answer. So, um, let's go ahead and move on to the next one here. So we are given uh, grams and moles, and actually I wanna go back to the last problem. When you are typing this in the calculator, what I want you to, to, to always ensure is that you put this in parentheses. So you need to put the, you will always put scientific notation in parentheses. And so especially when dividing, I mean really it only matters when you're dividing, but if you just always put your scientific notation in parentheses, you will never run into a, uh, you'll, you'll reduce a lot of your calculator error. So anyways, moving on. So we're given moles and we're going to uh, grams, all right? So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, this flow chart here. So again, we're given moles and it's asking for grams. So again, we're going backwards, but there's not really a forward or backwards, it's just uh, one way or the other. So you can go either way. So it's gonna be 4.00 moles of uh, H2 and we're gonna go from moles to grams. And we know that one mole is going to be the molar mass of hydrogen gas, which is going to be on the periodic table. Now, if you take a look, it's 1.008, except this isn't H, it's H2. And so we need to multiply the molar mass by two because again, hydrogen is a Hofbrinkle, and Hofbrinkles always have a two if they're alone by themselves. So we're gonna go from H, uh, so we have to multiply by two, so it's gonna be 2.016. When you multiply it by two, you type this in your calculator to get the right answer. And it's gonna be grams of H2 because the moles cancel out and uh, you're left with grams. All right, let's go ahead and do one more here. So we're given grams and it's asking for moles. And again, we can go directly between grams and moles. So this one's gonna also be a one fraction problem. And again, I'm gonna set this up pretty quickly. We have this many grams of carbon. Again, we're gonna multiply by conversion factor and we're always gonna put this on the bottom here. We will always do that because we're trying to cancel out units. Again, if you're trying to cancel out the units and set the units up correctly, you will always be able to get the right answer. And so we're gonna go from grams to moles, and we know that one mole is the, when we go between grams and moles, we know we use the uh, molar mass here. So again, when we go between grams and moles, we use the molar mass, which again is on the periodic table. So let's go ahead and take a look at the periodic table here, and you'll see that carbon is 12.011. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at this. So carbon is gonna be 12.011. And all we do is we type this in our calculator to get the right answer. And what we end up with is 10.01 moles of carbon, and that is correct sig figs. All right, and don't forget to box your answers just so that we know what the answers are. And I'm going to put the uh, answers to the rest of the independence practice problems on my website. Definitely work through these problems. I promise you that this is going to be uh, something that is extremely important for you to know like the back of your hand and uh, to make sure, make sure you really understand it because we will use this every single uh, unit. So remember when we're going between grams and moles, we use the molar mass. When we're going between atoms and moles, we use Avogadro's number. Have a great day.